Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make a silicone mold. Let's get started. First, you're going to want something to pour your mold into. Ironically, it is a laser cut mold. Let's see how I did it. Now that we have our silicone mold all ready, we want to know how much silicone we're going to need to fill this up. So the easiest way is to get some water and simply pour it into your mold. Once your mold is filled, then we're going to pour it into another cup. Very carefully. Maybe a bigger cup. So that is just about a half of a cup. So since the silicone is a one to one ratio, we're going to do about a fourth of a cup and a fourth of a cup. So we get a half of a cup of the silicone once it's all done. So we're just going to clean out our mold and make it free of water. So this cup is about one cup exactly. Since we need a half a cup to fill the mold, we're going to fill this guy up to a quarter. So what we're going to do part A and fill it up about a quarter of the way. Being exact is not too crazy. Just want to get close. So we have this guy. And now we're going to add part B to our mixture. So what we're gonna do is take this same size cup and we're going to fill it to the exact same height as part A. You could measure it out, but this makes it very easy. So you just keep it visual and we're gonna go about the same height as the other cup. Now we're gonna mix part A with part B. We're gonna simply pour it in These are handy dandy scrap acrylic. Get all the residual silicone off of the bottom and the edge. And stir. This specific silicone has a pot life of about 30 minutes, which is a long time. Um, and you should be mixing this for about five minutes. So, Watch a YouTube video while you're stirring. So silicone likes to stick to the edges. So you wanna sort of run your stir stick around the edges and the bottom and <clears throat> just continue to stir and mix everything nice. You don't want any uncured silicone. After stirring enough, it's been about five minutes, we're gonna take our other cup and we're going to pour it in. And then again, get all the excess silicone off the edges. This helps get all that stuff that was on there back to the top of our bucket. And then we can stir a little bit more in here. 
Now we're gonna take our silicone and we are gonna slowly pour it, not on the direct uh, object, with, which in this case is the key, but around it. And we're just gonna keep it in that spot with a small stream until it covers everything. This is technically uh, like bubble free silicone, but it will catch, capture bubbles if you do this improperly. So we're just gonna do it nice and slow and let the silicone seep into every crevice that it gets to. So there are some areas in here that I'm just going to take and uh, just poke in there and just make sure that no tiny little bubbles are captured in some of the, uh, the negative cuts that we made in this project. Bubbles like getting caught around corners, tight, tight nooks, so always check those. And the teeth of the key as well, the word, the letters rather, were very small. I'm just gonna go around and get everything nice and bubble free around those tight corners. Clean off our poker stick and then continue to pour the rest until we get to the top of our mold. Oh, it's about to seep out, but that is okay. So this pourable silicone takes about four to six hours to dry depending on humidity and heat. So I just like to leave it overnight. So we're gonna leave this guy overnight and come back tomorrow. All right, it is the next day and the silicone mold is looking great. Uh, it cured properly. And one thing you can tell if it cures properly is the cup we mixed it in. Any sort of material like this is gonna take longer to cure when it's thin. And you can see the cup has a thin coating of silicone. We're just gonna test to see everything came out right. And the silicone feels and looks good. So let's pull the mold out of the mold. So I'm wearing gloves because these molds like to pick up dust and dirt when they're brand new. So I'm just gonna be a little careful and I'm gonna peel the mold from the mold. We didn't use any release agent, but it's still going to come out fairly easy on this acrylic. I'm going to slowly and carefully pull this from the mold. Just want to be nice and slow on all those details. There we go, our silicone mold. So what's great about this mold is you can sell this mold or you can sell the mother mold or you can sell the output of the actual mold, which right now we're gonna pour some resin into it and uh, show you guys the output. But you'll notice we put the name of the website, our made up website inverted that way when we pour the mold, it says everything properly. If you want to sell this as a product, and you'll see that the, uh, you know, the actual engravings on the product are inverted. So what I like to do with these types of molds is sort of paint powder pigment. So I just take a little bit of pigment and I go inside of our mold, sort of just dust it around the whole thing. So just take your paintbrush, sort of get it in sort of all the little crevices. Just keep going until everything is nice and coated. The silicone is just a little bit sticky, so the uh, mica pigment likes to 
stick to it. So it's not that big of a deal. You just gotta get it in those little areas. Alrighty. Now we're gonna take our uh, mold and just tap it. It's gonna get a little messy. And just tap it until all the extra powder is out. Now we have our coating of our pigment. We'll just use this towel, clean up a bit. And we're going to add pigment to our resin and mix it and then pour it in. So with the same pigment, since this is a uh, clear urethane, it's gonna sort of turn a yellowy and we don't want that. So we're just gonna add the same pigment to one of our parts. Make sure that your pigment is less than one tenth of the actual uh, material. So this stuff can get a bit dirty. Uh, so. Now we are going to pour our one part A into one part B. And we are gonna mix thoroughly. Get that really nice sort of marbled color in your uh, resin. Mix this until it starts heating up. It's got an exothermic reaction when you start mixing them and that's when it starts to uh, quote unquote kick. So once it gets hot enough, we're going to pour our resin into our mold. Let it seep into all the holes. If it overflows a little bit, that's fine. You can see I mixed probably enough to make three or four of these keys. We don't want it bubbling up too much out the back, so we're just gonna Scrape this guy across the top and wait for it to set. Should be about five. I like to wait 10 minutes, but it's cured in five minutes. So we'll come back after five minutes. Alrighty, it's been a handful of minutes. This is semi-rigid urethane, so it takes a little longer to uh, fully cure, but we can pull it out of our mold and then set it to finalize. So. Just simply peel it out. And we can clean up our flashing just by pulling on it. You can avoid this by just not filling it up as much. You'll see the other side. If we didn't put that powder in there, it would have had that cool look to it. We didn't want that for this one. We want it nice and even but uh, it's still good to know. So this guy, after we cleaned up all the flashing, we still have some, a little bit of flashing left, but after cleaning it up, it turned out pretty cool. And that's really it, guys. I hope you've learned something about making silicone molds and casting in resin. Uh, it's a very interesting thing. You know, a lot of times it's almost faster to do this if you have special colors that just don't come in acrylic. Um, this is really cool to do. So if you have any questions and comments, uh, put them down below. And until next time, keep making.